Oh, gaming just isn't fun anymore. Oh, why can't video games just be as fun as they were before? I'm sorry, what did you say? All I could hear was, I have terrible taste in games. You know, the internet is full of awful takes, but that's kinda to be expected. Personally, I prefer to just ignore them, but every now and then I tend to hear that one take that always turks me off. Oh, why can't video games just be as fun as they were before? Like, sure, there's people who say that as bait, but there's others who actually genuinely mean it. They believe what they are saying. Of course, those who say that are a minority who only play one type of game and should be ignored. But these takes in particular about gaming is dead tend to bother me because it's so wrong. And if you let them lose too much, others will start to believe them and parrot them around. I can get why these takes exist in the first place. Modern gaming has a ton of bad things nowadays. You can have an overhyped game end up being mediocre and boggy. There's tons of influencers talking about stuff they know nothing about but still sell it as facts. There's incomplete games coming out only to be quote unquote finished through updates or the fans will finish them through mods. And that's not even mentioning stuff like seasonal passes, microtransactions, and big companies becoming very anti-consumer friendly. Constantly pulling out shit they know they can get away with because some people are so dumb they lead whatever they do. Yes, I totally agree that these things exist and are a plague in the gaming industry. But you know, when you think about it, gaming has always had bad aspects about it. If you go to, say, to the 2000s, you had tons of shovelware games filling the market, or how almost every game franchise was trying to be dark, gritty, and mature. Remember that one time when everyone wanted to jump into the motion controls craze and Microsoft fans were left to starve for years? Hell, even if you go way before that, there was the video game crash of 1983 which occurred due to market saturation. Bottom line is, gaming has always had and will continue to have bad things. But that doesn't mean it has stopped being fun in the slideless. In fact, it's the total opposite. As gaming continues to exist, it grows, and it will continue to deliver new innovative ways to entertain and move people while still having those classic experiences that are worth your time. For those who don't get it, show this into your heads. There is always something amazing to play, and I'm not just talking about new games that are about to release. If you look hard enough, you can always find an incredible experience new and old, either from a studio that you like or from somewhere completely different. Here's one of the best examples I can give you. It's very obvious that this channel is mostly Nintendo focused, right? Well, 2015 was for me one of the worst years for gaming. Or that's what it looked like at first. Yeah, for Nintendo, it was terrible. Actually, scratch that. It was borderline insulting how awful that year was for Nintendo. Mario Party 10, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, Chibi Robo Ziplash, and of course, the banes of my existence, Fire Emblem Fates and Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Take a shot for every time I shot on these games on this channel. Oh my god, he died of alcohol poisoning. But did that make the year objectively terrible? Oh no, not at all! Even if Nintendo failed me that year, that doesn't mean everyone else did. 2015 was the year where we got Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, we got Soma, The Witcher 3, the beautiful, perfect, immaculate, flawless masterpiece that is Bloodborne. Also, did you forget about Undertale and the massive cultural impact it had? 2015 still deliver amazing stuff, and hell, even if I despise Nintendo that year, their consoles also released some awesome stuff that I completely skipped over. Splatoon, Bravely Second, Silver Chronicles X, Josh's Woolly World, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, Monster Hunter Generations, and Super Mario Maker. These are good experiences I miss from Nintendo because back then, I was so focused on the bath. And hell, Pretend that there was a year where nothing worthwhile released. That doesn't mean there's nothing left to play. What if you go back and try something you didn't play years prior? I think that some people have this mentality that they must play the newest, hottest game everyone online is talking about. But when you think about it, sometimes that results into you forcing yourself to do something. 
and from my experience I can tell you that is never worth it. You don't have to be on top of what is currently popular. If you're not in the mood, if it's not your thing, or if you're not willing to give it a fair chance, but still force yourself to try it, it's only natural that you'll hate it. I feel that a lot of people put so much weight on these major popular AAA titles everyone is talking about. Like Bethesda's newest game, the next Assassin's Creed, the next cinematic over-the-shoulder action game by Sony, or the next Pokemon title. I'm not saying they can't be good games on their own, but if they fail, people will start to go around calling them the perfect examples on why gaming is ruined and why gaming is dead. But again, AAA games aren't the only ones in existence, you know? You're allowed to play something with less hype and popularity too. Which is ironic, because most of the time, I see that people actively try to find excuses to hate a game. The most common example. Those who treat Metacritic as the absolute truth. No matter what's the general score or the user score. If both of them are positive, oh no, these are paid reviews and blind fans. Or if the score is negative, they'll go, haha, see, I was right all this time on this game being shit. But then you can have other groups of people who will only try a game if the scores are high enough and it's like, dude, why did you care so much? Like, yeah, it's great when a game you love has great scores and is beloved by many, but like, a score doesn't fully define your enjoyment of a game. If you like it, that's awesome! Look, here's one of my favorite games. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. It was hated by critics, but that doesn't stop me from calling it one of the best Pokemon games ever made. And on the other side of the coin, mainline Pokemon tends to get favorable reviews. But I'm still not afraid to call them shit if needed, and that's totally fine. Why can't you do the same? But the Metacritic dick riders aren't the only ones who need an excuse to hate a game. There's those who hate a game just for the sole fact that it is a remake. Others who hate a game for being a genre they don't even understand. The people who cling so hard on nostalgia are also very annoying. Or the classic ones, those who call a game kitty and refuse to touch it just because it was made by Nintendo. God, you know which crowd I hate the most? Those who ironically say, I miss when games weren't about politics, because 90% of the time those quote-unquote politics are just a gay person existing in a game. No, actually, even more pathetic, because a game gives you the option to choose your pronouns. And the biggest irony of it all is that said group of people's favorite games will be stuff like Fallout, Metal Gear Solid or Final Fantasy VII. I'm sorry, but people like that are so damn stupid, they can't even see the irony in what they say. And at that point it's like, oh come on, if you're gonna be petty and miss on so many amazing titles because of your impossible standards and your nitpicks, then okay, go around and be math. Those of us who care will no doubt make memories with different games because we're willing to try them. And that's another important point I want to make. Sometimes you should get out of your comfort zone. I'm not saying you should love every genre that exists, because no, that is not possible. But every now and then it wouldn't hurt to dip your toes in something completely new. You never know, the right game might change your mind. I personally used to dislike roguelike games, but Hades and Slade Spire were so incredible, I spent over 100 hours in each of them, and now I find the genre extremely fun. I've seen tons of people who hate JRPGs adore Yakuza Like a Dragon because it is that good of a game. And remember, it is okay if you want to try a game for whatever reason, either because of a mode that looks interesting, because you like the art style, or because you looked at one character and thought, oh my god, she's so hot I'm playing this game. I never beat Tales of Arise. But the most important thing about it all, and one of the best advice I can give you, don't be a company dick rider. You can have a favorite studio because of how they work and the type of games they make. Do you like Sony? Great. Do you love Namco? Awesome. Do you like this little indie company? Totally respectable. But don't forget that at the end of the day, they're bound to fuck up because no shit, they're companies. There's talented and passionate people behind them, no doubt. But a company itself only cares about profits and most of the time, it completely disregards the well-being of its workers. 
So we as consumers must be smarter and let them know when they are fucking up so we can continue to get better products and services. We win nothing by defending every little thing they do. Did you hear that? People who still have console wars in the current year? You know, with Nintendo, I think they knocked it out of the park this year with Pikmin 4 and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But they're insane if they believe I'm supporting their practice of releasing an incomplete Mario sports game only to finish it through updates. Instead, I would rather jump into something worthwhile. Ooh, look! Capcom outdid themselves with the Resident Evil 4 Remake and Street Fighter 6. I'm so happy for them! But I still don't support the way in which they're treating Mega Man. In that case, I'd rather see what Microsoft has and... Oh, look! Hi-Fi Rush! An unexpected, incredible and extremely original banger of a game! I'm so happy I played this! Or maybe I can go with Sega, cause right now they're giving so much love and attention to the Like a Dragon series. But damn! Let's pretend that right now every big company is releasing bad games. Let's see what indie studios are doing. Oh fuck yes! This new game called Pizza Tower is amazing! That's what I'm talking about! With this, you let companies know when they're doing right and you let them know what we truly want. And besides, diversifying your options is excellent so that you always have something to play. I think that the general public tends to give a lot of attention to games and people that do not deserve it. Hype culture in particular is to blame for this. We give so much focus to something that may or may not be good. But by doing that, we end up ignoring other stuff that also deserve our attention and time. I believe that we as gamers must support projects that have genuine love and passion behind them. So, what did we learn today? One, there is always something fun to play, old or new, either in consoles or in PC. Two, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. You might be surprised at what cool stuff you can find. Three, don't be a company dick rider because that only tells companies they can do whatever the hell they want from you and not exactly in a pleasing way. And four, gaming is still fun. And if someone ever says otherwise, just remember, they only play one type of game, they have shitty taste, and you're legally allowed to do this to them.